The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta is one of the most popular of all members of the Kraft family of fine foods. It's known to folks everywhere as the cheese food of exceptional nourishment and delightful flavor. Enjoy it often. When you do, you may be sure you are enjoying the finest quality cheese food you can buy. Velveeta... Made only by Kraft. I'm Dr. Clarence Olson. By day, an intern at Summerfield City Hospital, and by night, a rival of Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. He claims I'm always trying to take his girls away from him, and he's right. I contend the big water buffalo tries to monopolize all the pretty girls in town. That's my job. <laughs> it's probably parked in Grace Tuttle's apartment right now. Yeah, are you sure you don't want to go to a movie, Grace? Uh, not tonight, Throckmorton. I'm a little tired. You're out late last night, were you? Oh, not so late. Well, I phoned you about nine, but nobody answered. I wasn't home at nine. Well, I was going to phone again about ten, but I fell asleep. <laughs> I wasn't home by 10, either. Gee. Were you at a teacher's meeting, by any chance? No. Red Cross? No. You went to a movie with somebody, perhaps? I didn't go alone. Oh, I naturally assume you'd go with uh, one of the lady teachers? <laughs> Stop being so curious about last night. This is our evening. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, excuse me, Throckmorton. Darn phone. Hello? Grace, this is Clarence. Oh, hello. Yeah, that's Olson. I know his voice. <laughs> I'm off duty. How about another movie? I knew he was poaching last night. I'm sorry, I'm busy tonight. Oh. Throckmorton? Uh-huh. You're not busy. You're wasting your time. <laughs> Shh, Clarence. I want Gildersleeve to hear. Yes, yes. Send old Rain and the puss home at 10 o'clock, and I'll come over and save the evening. Pushy intern. I I'll have to say goodbye now, Clarence. But I haven't used up my three minutes. He doesn't know it, but he's on borrowed time. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, Clarence. Okay, goodbye, beautiful. What a phony flatterer. He is not. Oh, now, Grace, I, I didn't mean you aren't pretty. Just that he doesn't have a right to say it on my date. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, Throckmorton, but I can't help it if he wants to talk to me several times a day. Well, by George, that moth-eaten medic spends too much time over here. Every time I open the door, I smell ether. <laughs> Throckmorton, you're jealous. Well, oh, for, I'll bet that's Olson calling again. Let me answer it. All right. Hello? Hello, Throckmorton. Olson, I knew you'd call. I knew you'd answer. I just wanted to hang up on you. Oh! <laughs> Bertie. Evening, Miss Gillsleeve. Yeah, Bertie, what do you have for dinner? Tonight, Bertie's got an alibi for dinner. A what? Dinner's gonna be a little late, and Bertie wants to alibi why. Oh, well, that's all right, Bertie. Well, I plan to have a five-pound roast tonight. Yeah, hey, good. And when I have a five-pound roast, I scoot it in the oven at four o'clock. And you know how I know it's four? Look at the clock? No, sir. I know it's four when I hear the Harmony Twins plus two. Harmony Twins plus two? Who are they? Oh, they're the happiest quartet on radio. Oh, I see. Every day at four o'clock they come on singing, When I pretend I'm gay, I never feel that way. Yeah, I'm only thinking <laughs> that clouds with sunshine. Yeah, I get Singing it, Bert. blue, beautiful hues, covered with gold. Bertie. I roll, roll, play in a clown, I... trying to drown all my woes. Bertie, please. <laughs> 
What does that have to do with the roast? That's my alibi. The Harmony Twins plus two don't come, didn't come on at four. Oh, my goodness. And Bertie didn't know what time it was, and the roast didn't get put in, and that's why we're going to have stew for dinner a little late. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. What's for dinner, Bertie? Well, we were going to have roast, but shall I tell him why we ain't going to have it, Mr. Gilsey? No. <laughs> no, the stew will be fine. Yes, sir. But it'd be a little late. Yeah, I know, Bertie. And if Bertie don't get in the kitchen, it's going to be later. Then Mr. Gillsley's going to get in the stew, and Bertie's going to get a roasted. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny about having stew? It seldom happens, my boy. And nobody makes it like Bertie. Yeah, but I got things to do. Well, looks like you'll have time to do your homework before dinner. No, oh, grown. What are you going to do? I think I'll do my homework. Get on the phone and make a date. I wish I was old enough to do homework like that. What? I work at homework, and you work to get over to some girl's home. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, when you're as busy as I am all day, you need a lot of recreation at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Who are you going to call, Miss Tuttle? No. no. I was over there last night, and Grace didn't show me the proper consideration. What do you mean? Well, Dr. Olson called, and she stayed on the phone a long time talking to him. I just had to sit there and listen to him run me down. You're sore, huh? Well, it seems every time I have a date, he horns in somehow. Tonight, I think I'll take out your school principal. Miss Henshaw? Yeah. Keep her out late so she won't notice all my mistakes tomorrow. <laughs> yep. I'll kill two birds with one shot. I'll give Grace something to think about and get that Olsen out of my hair for a night. Yeah, I hope Irene's home. Hello? Is this Lilac 239? Yes, is that you, Gildersleeve? <laughs> oh, sir, you again. <laughs> Someday I'm going to turn that intern inside out. Well, Peavy has shamrocks in his window. Why, Georgie's observing St. Patrick's Day, too. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Yeah, I see you have an Irish display in the window. Well, I have a few Irish customers. I have a few that are Scotch. What do you want, McTavish? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peavy. Give me a cigar. Very well. Would you like a green one? You're not selling green cigars. And I stocked a few, but I'm not selling them. <laughs> I may have to dye them red and sell them for punk sticks on the 4th of July. Punk sticks? Yeah, they're punk cigars. <laughs> Phoebe, I've never seen a man run down his merchandise the way you did. Well, that way I have very few complaints, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh? I beat him to the punch and complain first. <laughs> <laughs> Say, there's that sneaky Clarence Olson parking across the street. Dr. Olson still giving you fits? Every time I go with a girl, he tries to move in. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he just admires your taste. Say, that's a good-looking blonde he's helping out of the car. Yes, he is. I see you admire his taste, too. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen her around before. I believe they're headed this way. I'll we'll have to tell Mrs. Peavy about her. Of course, I won't make her sound as good as she looks. You know, Peavy, this is my chance to get back at him. Are you going to give him one of my green cigars? No, but he's always trying to steal my girls. I may just give him something to worry about. My, my. I can be as pushy as he is. Oh, my, yes. Come on in, Marie. Well, hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Dr. Olson. Hello, Clarence. Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. Uh, Mr. Peavy, we'd like to see some compacts. Very well. We're going to look at compacts? I'd like to buy you one, Marie. Marie, yeah. Could be French. But, Clarence, you've bought me so many things already. It's my pleasure. Yeah, I guess it'd be moving too fast if I offered to buy it. <laughs> we have some very nice compacts here. Perhaps the young lady would like one of these. Oh, they're beautiful. Pick out whatever you'd like. Thank you. It doesn't look like he's going to introduce us. I'll have to force it, I guess. Uh, Clarence? Yes, Gildersleeve? That's a nice one your friend is looking at. 
Don't you think so, miss? Well, uh, is this gentleman a friend of yours, Clarence? No, he's no friend of mine. (laughs) (laughs) Clarence is always joking. I've known him for years. Haven't I, Clarence? Seems like years. (laughs) You made up your mind, Marie? Oh, I love this one. Wrap it up, Mr. Peavy. Very well. May I see the one you picked out? Of course. Hey, good taste. Thank you. We're in a hurry, Marie. Let Mr. Peavy wrap it. Uh, I'll put it in a gift box. Oh, that would be very nice. Uh, Clarence, your friend has a very interesting accent. It must come from some other place. Yes, she does. You do, huh? Eh? <laughs> yes, I do. Well, let me see if I can guess where you're from, Miss... Uh, uh, Miss... Uh, what'd you say her name is, Clarence? I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> you miss... Uh, If I knew your name, it'd give me a clue. Here's your compact, young lady. Oh, what a pretty box. (laughs) Thank you. I put it on my bill, Mr. Peavy. Very well. Shall we go, Marie? May I buy you and the young lady a soda before you go, Clarence? No, thanks, Gildersleeve. Oh, you're very kind to offer. Well, it'd give me a chance to place your interesting accent. I hope you don't think I'm forward. On the contrary, I always considered you a little backward. (laughs) Olson. Goodbye, Mr. Peavy. Call again. By Armory. Oh, Clarence, you're so gallant. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Gildersleeve, I thought you were going to steal his girl. How do you like that? I liked it. I found it very interesting. (laughs) Peavy, you know what I'm going to do? No. I'm going to outsmart that taffy-haired intern yet. (laughs) No, no, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Take shrimp, take rice, take a golden cheese sauce made with Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta... Put them all together and you have one of the most delicious and different main dishes you could want. It's Shrimp Rice Biloxi. And here's how you fix it. In the top of your double boiler, melt a half pound of Velveeta. You'll find that Velveeta melts quickly, perfectly. Now, stir in a third of a cup of milk. And when this mixture is smooth, add a cup and a half of cooked shrimp, cover and heat. Then when you're ready to serve, you just pour the Velveeta shrimp mixture over four individual rice molds that you've made... And there it is, shrimp rice biloxi. This is just one of the many wonderful main dishes you can make with Velveeta. Main dishes that are delicious because Velveeta has such a fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And main dishes that are nourishing because Velveeta is rich in vital food values from milk. Why, two ounces of Velveeta, the amount you get at an average serving, gives you more of milk's vital food values than a big eight-ounce glass of milk. Cook with Velveeta often. You'll find it's a special help now during Lent. Get a two-pound loaf from your grocer tomorrow so you'll have plenty for sandwiches, too. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta when you buy. It's the finest quality cheese food you can buy. Velveeta, made only by Kraft. Mr. Gilson, you got tired of having Dr. Olson try to steal his girlfriend. So when the good doctor showed up in Mr. Peavy's with a cute blonde, Mr. Gilson, he decided to turn the tables. Bertie don't know how he's going to turn them when all he knows is the girl's first name. Hey, operator, give me your manager, Mr. Stark, please. <laughs> now he's trying to get that number's number. <laughs> Mr. Stark, this is Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, city water commissioner. Yeah, I need a little help, so I thought I'd go right to you. I'm trying to get in contact with a young lady whose last name has escaped me. <laughs> New in town. A potential water customer, you know. <laughs> that man. <laughs> so I'm wondering if you have any new telephone subscribers with Marie for a first name. No, no, I don't have her address either. All he's got is determination. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead and check the list. I'll hold on. Yeah, I'm still here, Mr. Stark. Yeah, if it'll help any, she does have an accent. It could be French. No, I don't think it's Jones. Goodbye, Mr. Stark, and thank you. 
Uh, the telephone company couldn't help me, Bertie. No, sir. Why, Unc? Hello, Leroy. Of course, I checked the water turn-ons down at the office first thing. Well, there's one thing sure. They've got to drink water. Who's got to drink water? Uh, this doesn't concern you, Leroy. Who does it concern? And I checked the transfer companies, Bertie, to see who's moved into town. She's got to live somewhere. Who's got to live somewhere? Who are you trying to find? The light department hadn't received any order from her. Maybe she likes to sit around in the dark. I get it. You're trying to locate an owl. An owl? Well, sure. They drink water, have to come from somewhere, and like to sit around in the dark when they aren't flying. Oh, my goodness. Leroy, I'm not looking for an owl. Superwoman? No. I didn't think so. Who are you looking for, Unc? Yeah, I'm trying to get a line on a girl. Oh, that again. No, I'm trying to tease Dr. Olson. Your uncle's trying to give the doctor a dose of his own medicine. Yeah? I saw him in Peavy's with a new girl, and he wouldn't introduce us. Why didn't you just strike up a conversation? Why didn't you walk up and say hi? Oh. All Mr. Gilsleeve knows is that her first name is Marie. Heck, Dick Tracy solved a lot of cases with less than that. I've got to find out where she lives. Maybe she lives in a tree. <laughs> Believe me, this girl didn't come out of any tree. Hey, why don't you shadow Dr. Olson? You could follow him to the hospital, right into surgery, even let him operate on you if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with him till you find out. Mr. Gilsleeve thinks she might be French. Yeah? Hey, I'm studying French. Take me along as an interpreter. Interpreter? I'd say, bonjour. What does that mean? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what a hell. <laughs> I'd give anything to get back at Olson. If I had that girl's phone number, I'd call up when he has a date and pester him the way he did me. She seemed willing enough to talk to me in Peavy's. If Olson had given her the chance, I'd have... Hey, that looks like the girl coming out of Hogan Brothers. She's alone. She's getting in Olson's car. It must be serious if he lets her drive his car. Now's my chance. Hey, miss! Uh, Miss Marie. Oh, hello. Uh, pardon me, but I wonder if you need some help getting out of your parking place. Oh, you're very kind, but I can manage. You do remember me, don't you? Commissioner Gildersleeve, in the drugstore, tried to buy you a soda. Yeah, I mean, volunteered to. <laughs> I remember you very well. Of course, Clarence wouldn't introduce us. Wasn't he annoying? He doesn't want you to know my name. Well, in a way, I can't blame him. You're a very lovely young lady. Thank you. Of course, I'm not going to press you for your name. Phone number? <laughs> I think that's off limits, too. Well, I give up. If you just give me your address, I'll send a note of apology for trying to meet you. I've never heard that approach before. <laughs> yeah, all right. I guess I've made a fool of myself. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Clarence has probably been running me down. I'm just sorry you formed an opinion of me prematurely. I have formed an opinion of you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You have? I think you're a very nice man. You were not nice enough to cut in on Clarence. Oh, maybe. Well. <laughs> What's the saying? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again? You're all right. I've tried and tried, but I'll try again. When you start the car, I'll jump on the back bumper and follow you home. <laughs> I don't think an important city official should be seen doing that. But if you wish, you may help me out of this parking space. I may? Perhaps it is a little tighter than I first realized. Well, I'll run right around and get behind the wheel. Yeah. You'll have to scoot over a little, Marie. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gildersleeve, you're making progress. You're in Olson's car with his girl. You can back up about a foot, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, yeah, I've got it all figured out. Oh! <laughs> I hope we didn't scratch the paint. Yeah, well, Clarence is a doctor. He can have some more grafted on. <laughs> Well done. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You don't want me to drive you home? You're new in Summerfield. Might get lost. I can manage now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get out then. 
I'm certain I can find my way home to the Royal Arms, apartment 21. 21? <laughs> yeah, I'll remember that. It's your age, I'll bet. Oh, you are a flatterer. <laughs> How about tonight at 8? Tonight at 8. I'll tell Clarence I have a headache. You know, I just assume he knows. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. Hey, now. <laughs> Hello, Phoebe. Why, George, it's turned out to be a fine afternoon. And you don't say. Yeah, I just pulled a fast one. And you look like the cat that ate the canary. <laughs> you bet. You remember that pretty girl Olson wouldn't introduce me to? Oh, my, yes. Well, I have a date with her tonight. The water commissioner's turning on the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't turn on too much pressure. You may burst a pipe. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm doing. She was going out with Olson tonight. She's going to say she has a headache. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> All right, Pete. It just shows I can take his girls away as easy as he can take mine. Easier. Well, if you're going courting, how about taking along a box of candy? Oh, I'm not courting. You know Grace Tuttle is still tops on my hit parade. <laughs> it's quite a parade. Miss Kelly, Miss Henshaw, Miss Tuttle. Yeah, and Olson's tried to cut me out with all of them. Well, a little candy might help out. You don't have enough sweet talk, offer her a sweet meat. Oh, what the heck. Wrap up a one-pound box. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, if you were trying to worry Dr. Olson, I'd give his girl about five dollars worth. Not that I'm thinking about the profit. <laughs> oh, no. If you take a big box, he'll have to come up with a bigger box. Say, you're using your head, Petey. That's what I say. <laughs> give me one of those five-pounders with a purple bow on it. Here you are. Oop, Petey, hide the candy. Here's Grace. Well, you hide it. You bought it. <laughs> Over. Hello, Miss Peavy. Hello, Miss Tuttle. And Throckmorton. What a pleasant surprise. Hello, Grace. I didn't expect you. Now, Throckmorton, are you hiding something? Well, your briefcase. Oh, what a pretty purple bow on it. <laughs> I have an idea he didn't want you to see that. It's probably a gift. Yeah, that, that's right. That's I was saving it for a surprise. <laughs> well, she's surprised. <laughs> I certainly am. Here, Grace, with my compliments. I was going to give it to you later. Don't you want to wait and give it to me tonight? Well, I, I can't come by this evening. That's why I wanted to give it to you now. Uh, but you said you were going to give it to me later. Well... Hmm. How will he get out of this one? Well, I, I was going to give it to you on my way home when I stopped to tell you I couldn't see you later. <laughs> he got out of it. <laughs> Something I can do for you, Miss Tuttle? Well, I came in for some candy, Mr. Peavy, but now I won't have to buy any. <laughs> my, my. Goodbye. Phone me, Throckmorton. Yeah, all right, Grace. Ta-ta. Call again. Well, Peavy, you got beat out of a candy sale. <laughs> no, I didn't. What? Right? You still have to buy some for Dr. Olson's girl. <laughs> See, revenge is expensive. Yeah, Marie lives in a nice apartment building. Yeah, I guess it was a dirty trick to phone the hospital and leave word for Clarence to come by here. <laughs> You're sly, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Marie. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. Yeah, I hope you like candy. Oh, I love it. How thoughtful of you to bring it. Shall I get my coat? You, well, why don't we just stick around the apartment for a while? As you wish. Yeah, I'd like to know more about you. Well, there isn't much to tell. Your accent still intrigues me. I can tell you're not a native. Oh, yes, I am. Most of my family is in Minnesota. Oh, you didn't pick up that accent in Minnesota. <laughs> I have lived in Europe. Yeah, I knew it. What language do you speak beside uh, broken English? <laughs> what language do you wish to hear? You speak more than one? Oh, four or five. Connaissez-vous la langue française? What's that? 
Sind Sie in Deutschland oder das Unterland gewesen? Äh... Nein. Ich bin sicher, dann, dass du nooit Hollands hebt kunnen leren. Niet waar? Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> She sounds like the United Nations. <laughs> I wish Olsen would show up. Now, you tell me something about yourself. Well, as you know, I'm the water commissioner. And a confirmed bachelor? Well, I haven't been put over a barrel yet. Perhaps you haven't met the right woman. Well... Oh, excuse me, I'll answer the door. Zeke saved by the buzzer. <laughs> Why, Clarence. Hello, Marie. Yeah, wait until he sees me, he'll blow his top. I didn't expect you, Clarence. But I got a message. Well, who's this? Gildersleeve? <laughs> Hello, Clarence. <laughs> if you're after a date, you're a little late. <laughs> well, I did plan to take Marie to a movie, but she said she had a headache. I guess I told a fib. What's this all about? Clarence, I hope you don't mind my cutting you out this evening. <laughs> oh, that's all right, Gildersleeve. Let's just say the better man won. Yes, indeed. And it's very sporting of you to say that. <laughs> uh, Marie, do you really want to go out with this fellow tonight? I find him very interesting. <laughs> All right. I know when to bow out. I'll be on my way. Yeah, you'd better be on your way. Goodbye. Goodbye, Clarence. Goodbye. He isn't as upset as I thought he'd be. Oh. After I wouldn't go to the movie, he made a date tonight. He did? With a girl named Grace Tuttle. Grace Tuttle? He was glad to get rid of me for an evening. Well, then you're not his girlfriend? I'm not supposed to tell you, but I'm his sister. Oh! Ray Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Why let lunchbox sandwiches be a problem? Make sure the sandwiches you fix are delicious and hearty, too. Make them with Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food. Velveeta gives you sandwiches with a wonderful, rich, and yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And Velveeta sandwiches are nourishing because Velveeta is so rich in vital food values from milk. Whether they're for dad or the youngsters, lunchbox sandwiches you make with Velveeta will be perfect. Tomorrow, get Velveeta, made only by Kraft. Hey, Young, are you going out with Dr. Olson's sister again tonight? Well, she wanted to, but I'm going to a Red Cross meeting, to heck with women. Giving them up, huh? Well, the Red Cross needs workers to put over their drive for new members and more funds. I know, Miss Tuttle told us about that in school. Good. Everybody should get behind the Red Cross. You know, my boy, the Red Cross has always been a symbol of hope for disaster victims, soldiers, veterans, and civilians who need emergency aid. And to maintain their services during the coming year, they'll need $85 million at least. <whistles> so this year, I, for one, am going to work harder than ever. Good, Uncle, and that'll help you forget women. Yeah, well, I have to go have a meeting with the chairman. Yeah? Who is the chairman this year? Well, Miss Tuttle. <laughs> what a character! Good night, folks. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Shipp, Gladys Holland, George Neese, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Here it is, the best soup idea in years. In the top of a double boiler, add a can of condensed tomato soup to an equal quantity of water. Then when the soup is piping hot, stir in the contents of an eight-ounce jar of Kraft's Cheese Whiz. It's a delicious combination, a creamy blend of your favorite cheese and tomato flavors. Enjoy it as the main part of a lunch or supper, or as an appetizer before dinner. This is just one of dozens of quick tricks you can do with this pasteurized processed cheese spread, Cheese Whiz. Tomorrow, get tomato soup and Kraft's Cheese Whiz. Now, play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on the NBC Radio Network.